Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning, dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Welcome once again to Lockdown Hot Takes. I'm your Lodge Master. With me as always, virtually, is Brother Bishki. Hello, Lodge Master. And the hothead himself. Will he get hot tonight? Let's see, Brother Lucas. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. This is another one that I I wanted to do this one. I vetted this one. I'll fall in the grenade for this one. This was at the time that I suggested it to you boys. This was the number one streamed movie on Netflix. So in my thinking, I was like, tons of people are watching this. Whether or not they're admitting it, whether or not their eyeballs are actually on it, it is the wrong Missy. That is a title. That is a title of a movie that we watched. Probably the number one movie in the world if you take Netflix, you know. And I just wanted to talk a little Happy Madison with you boys. Mm, I wanted to mm -hmm. kind of get your get your temperature, gauge your temperature on Adam Sandler's production company. And so, Bishki, what was your history with Happy Madison? Cinefessional. Uh, there's been there's. <laughs> There's been 45 Happy Madison productions. I went down the list. They started with Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo in 1999. And Classic. I have never seen any of them. I've never seen them. Oh, my God. I, I've skipped them. You know, I'm not. <laughs> there was a time when I liked Adam Sandler and David Spade and even Rob Schneider, <laughs> even Rob Schneider a little bit. But that was like early. Wow. Not That was early 90s SNL. And then right. by, the, and by the time I, I saw Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. But by the time the late 90s rolled around, I was kind of done done with all three of them. You were out. And you were out. Uh, here I am. I've come back. <laughs> and um, at least it was not Jack and Jill. Lodgemaster has been threatening Jack and Jill now for, for ooh, years ooh. To, to drop at the movie lodge. But um, we've come close. I use it as like a mob boss punishment <laughs> hanging over everybody's heads. But until that, uh, this is the only Happy Madison production I've seen, yeah. LT, what's your history? I uh, remember really liking Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore when it came out. I, I didn't see either of them theatrically. It was home video, but I'm a big lover of Steve Martin's The Jerk, and, and Billy Madison mm -hmm. was essentially that concept but like in school and it was again this is like all pre-internet right so there's no such thing as viral videos i remember for like months with happy uh gilmore like the bob barker the price is wrong bitch like of course pe people of were course. quoting that like my freshman year of high school for months like four people lost their minds months yeah. because like there was no internet like there's no youtube there's no fucking tiktok like it's only fucking bob barker and the price is right monday through friday <laughs> at 11 a.m on, on abc or cbs <laughs> And and so like yeah, I was a big fan as a kid, but then like completely aged out of it within like a year or two because by the time the Water Boy came out, I distinctly <laughs> remember being disgusted with how much money the movie grossed. It was like a hundred million dollars oh, yeah. domestic. Huge hit. You can do it. Remember? Full disclosure, cinefessional. I've never seen the Water Boy or anything. You know, after oh, Lucas, the wedding crash. Stay away. Uh, excuse Stay me, the singer. And and what's interesting is I revisited. I haven't seen any of the other Happy Madison productions, but I revisited the Wedding Singer earlier this year, or maybe it was late last year, and I like teared up a little bit at the end. Like it was weird. Like it kind of got me or something. Um, so I don't know what that tells you about where I'm at in my life, but um, <laughs> I, I I've stayed away. For like, let's say the last 20 years um, for all of these productions, I'll only watch, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson sanctioned or Safety Brothers sanctioned like Adam Sandler movies. Um, you need have, your Sandler cut cut with the top notch directors. Like I have a to, vague yeah. to stomach him. Yeah, like I have a vague awareness of like Mr. Deeds and Click. Sure. And like all the other like, yeah, Bishke said 45 titles and I, I think Adam Sandler is a true genius and like artist because he's like one of those guys 
where it doesn't matter what he's doing or what he's saying. He's just inherently got this like awkward rage, like man child, you know, innocence or vulnerability or sure. something. So, yeah, I, I, I know he's more of like a, uh, I think like a boomer dad joke kind of filmmaker. And he's a filmmaker that isn't afraid to make movies built around vacations. For, that's kind of for what his he's been... friends and family. Yes, yeah. which I which I respect. That's what he's kind of been known for lately. Yeah, so. yeah, I respect and appreciate that because come on, like he's he's paid his dues. He's done SNL. He's done the movies. He's done like all this, the stand up specials or whatever. It's like if he wants to have Netflix pay him you know, $400 million over five years for him to like make these movies in Hawaii with his friends and family, like more power to you, man. Like I would do it too. Well, let's see if we can keep juicing LT's love and light fruits when we subtly transition to the movie at hand, The Wrong Missy, which is a res resort comedy. What's the Lodge Master's history with Happy Madison? Like, have you seen a bunch of them or what? I mean, I've seen a handful. Okay. I've seen, I've, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen enough. I gave Billy Madison, you know, two out of five stars for my school newspaper and caught hell for it. <laughs> I was not really, I was not really on the same wavelength. I've never really been on the same wavelength as Adam Sandler. I've always found him kind of annoying and kind of in my later, in my later years, in my twilight, I've kind of seen what everybody was talking about. Like he, he, he took a while to grow on me and mm -hmm. now I find him perfectly amusing. But, you know, back in the day, it wasn't the case. And the water boy depressed the shit out of me because <laughs> it was such a huge hit. And I was like, this is just garbage. I remember yeah. Jasmine Botts for my high school was like, I refuse to give that movie any money. Like, I'm never going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was one of those guys. But here I am now with The Wrong Missy, a movie that Sandler's not even in. Yeah. It's David Spade wedged into the romantic lead spot, which I don't know if you can do that anymore. No, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's where I would like to start with, which yeah, is let's, let's talk for, about for, for, for our listeners, the, the wrong Missy is basically like forgetting the wrong Missy, like forgetting Sarah yes. Marshall, like to a T minus exactly minus like, yeah, the Russell Brand character, you know, plus the heartbreak kid a little bit. Correct. Like it's it's like forgetting Sarah Marshall plus Heartbreak Kid. And I think my biggest problem with it, besides that, with this like, oh, a resort movie, great, was that David Spade is at least like 20 years too old for the role. It's crazy. Or, or, it's or, crazy. Or, or, or he's 55. Or I should say his wig or toupee is like 10 <laughs> years too old or something. Like it's the yes. worst hairpiece I've ever Something's seen. Something's up. <laughs> it's not a good look. And they kind of make fun of that a little bit, but not enough. Yeah, and it's like, is he a draw? I mean, he's not like, you know, like the Schwarzenegger of comedy. Like, he's not hilarious. No, so he's why Adam Sandler's friend. So That's why are why. we, yeah, yeah. Why are we That's hanging on reason. to this guy as a romantic lead? Yeah. This is what we have. We have Hawaii. We have David Spade, who goes on a really shitty blind date with Lauren Lapkus. And she is kind of she kind of scares him with how nutty she is. She's the manic pixie nightmare girl. Yes. And I was thinking, you know, there might have been a, a time period where Adam Sandler would have played that role. Yeah. You know, like he would have been the, the wrong mister or whatever it would have been, you know? Yeah. But but as it is, he goes on this date with her. Her name's Missy slash Melissa. He meets another woman named Melissa that he hits it off with, like famously at an airport. They start making out in a in a janitor's closet, but she has to go catch her plane. So she's like, you know, I'll, I'll text you. And he gets a text. A bunch of convoluted comedic stuff happens and he's headed to his company's retreat. He's invited Missy, who he thinks is the woman from the airport, but it's really Lauren Lapkus. He's invited the wrong Missy folks <laughs> and so much is riding on it personally, professionally. And here this lunatic is causing all manner of havoc at this resort. Yeah. Well, so I that's, mean, that's the setup. 
Lapkiss in terms in terms of this movie is the only thing to talk about in my opinion. Like she is yes. she is given 110% like from the opening scene. Like she is like like the jokes are coming fast and furious throughout the movie. Most of them are not funny, but she <laughs> I laughed exactly twice in the entire movie. But I don't know. For me for me I was laughing at, I was laughing at her. I think they let her sure. off the leash and let her improvise a little bit cuz I don't think the writing yes. was that strong. Well, she's she's an amazing improv comic. I've yeah. I've been a fan of hers on podcasts for I don't know ten years now. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard she, of her in improv circles, and 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 she. This is the first time I've seen her, and I was very impressed. Yeah, she's extremely versatile, and yeah, like this this is her first starring role, so obviously she's going to want to go for broke, and everybody on the movie knew it. And it kind of reminds me of, like, early Whoopi Goldberg. Like, you knew you had, like, a talent from outer space that was hitting your movie screen, but Mm -hmm. it took a while for the content to meet her talent. Yeah. You know? And that's what I feel is going on with Lauren Lapkus. Like, she, she is eons ahead of pretty much everybody in this movie. And she seems like she kind of knows it, too. Yeah, I mean, Spade's just, like, the straight guy, and everyone else's energy is very low compared to Lapkus. Like, and, like, I'm a fan of Nick Swartzen, too, who, of course, is in every every Adam Sandler joint. Okay. And he, you know, he's doing what he can, but nobody nobody can match her, and nobody should. This, this should just play as a feature-length, barely feature-length, demo reel for her and she can do way more than this too so this is just the tip of the iceberg for her yeah my main takeaway was like give her a better writer better director put her as a star let her do her thing let her be keep it loose keep her let her improvise and it's gonna happen yeah it might happen the next one but it'll definitely happen the one after the next one whatever that is so we got Grubhub mentioned a lot. Grubhub paid some money for this. Blue Moon we got, beer. We got Blue Moon. We got James Patterson books. That's yeah. That's who we're dealing with in this lead character of David Spade. He he's reading James Patterson books. Yeah, that was a tip off where I was like, these are not my people. They're reading James Patterson <laughs> novels. Like, yeah. But it's just, I think, I think it's just they're they're thinking about what their demographic is. You know, they're like, who is watching these Adam Sandler movies? Who just who just puts these on in the background to mindlessly veg out to and there's some sort of venn diagram overlap with james patterson that couldn't be denied so they're like (laughs) we got to put that in there and david spade was probably like i've never read a james patterson book in my life and they're like well your character has (laughs) so there's a Rob Schneider cameo. Classic. Oof. Oof. Yeah. That, <laughs> he is that, lucky. That, it was like he was in a different movie. Like everyone else. A completely else in, different movie. Every everyone's in like a grounded, relatable romantic comedy that I like think is in the real world. And then Rob Schneider still thinks it's an SNL sketch. It's like, bro, like, yeah. like what are you doing? He's looking tired, yes. man. He's looking tired and old, and yeah. He's a he's a grizzled old uh, boat captain, or he works on the boat. I don't know. He's some sort of barnacle. Yeah. And there is, if if you, I'll go ahead. Okay, I'm feeling generous. I'll summon the salad dragon. Go for it. Hey, it's a dragon the salad dragon. A scene in a movie that is so bizarre, baffling, or transcendent that it instantly justifies the price of admission. Or Reese Witherspoon's leafy transformation in A Wrinkle in Time. There's a scene in which David Spade and his boss are down in a shark tank looking for sharks. I don't know, I don't know why. The, the boss wants to see a shark. And Missy has, like the T-1000, she has moved through the water and gotten onto the boat that has ditched her. She will not be dissuaded. And there's a rule about no chumming the waters for shark. So she, of course, gets a big bucket of chum and is trying to screw everything up for him. And she's trying to dump the chum into the shark cage. Rob Schneider is trying to stop her. They struggle over it, over the chum bucket. The chum bucket ends up pouring all over Missy and the stench of it is so disgusting that she 
pukes off the back of the boat and the puke, you see it kind of cascade down the water <laughs> into the shark tank. And then they have to deal with that puke coming down while the shark begins to attack them. Yeah, well so, done. So, I mean, and it's Digi, a digital C shark. Yeah, CGI vomit. <laughs> CGI vomit, CGI shark, CGI everything. But I mean, in this movie, that's what the salad dragon is, I think. So Schneider, Rob Schneider ends up punching the shark and it goes away. And, you know, like if you're if you don't have a lot of expectation from this movie and you've been beaten down by even lazier Sandler comedies, I think you're going to laugh at this section at least at least. Yeah, I would say the first half when Lapkus is kind of off off the rails is the strongest. Once she starts coming down to earth, then the movie, I mean, it goes into more of a traditional romantic comedy. Like ridiculously traditional because, yeah. of course, she's the wrong Missy at first, but then the right quote unquote Missy catches wind of what's been happening and shows up at the resort as well. But in the meantime... The wrong Missy has suddenly become super like together and is like really helpful and is like fixing all this dude's problems. Like what? <laughs> like, what? She she is out of control in the first half. Yeah. And then she just switches. Yeah, it's, like, a, it's a, it, does, it doesn't make any <laughs> logical sense. Like her personality just changes. Like, yeah, completely. And. It must also be said, I forgot about this, like in the in the name of nepotism, there is a professional rival called the Barracuda. She's a woman that that is constantly competing with David Spade at work. And she is played by none other than Adam Sandler's wife. And Oh, is that who she, that was? Okay. She gives one of the worst performances. Terrible. Comedic, dramatic, or otherwise that I have ever witnessed. Like, it is, I was looking forward to her being on screen because I'm like, how is she going to read every word wrong? Like, how is the inflection <laughs> going to be completely wrong? And then I would think about what got left on the editing room floor from her. Oh Oof. my god! Yeah, Oof. there was also a scene in the in the beginning where they get to the hotel, where Lauren Lupkus walks up to three kids, and like says something, and they're like, "You can't ride turtles! Like that's wrong!" And she's like, "Fuck you! I was being fucking nice!" And she's like screaming at these kids, <laughs> and the kid in the middle like looks very much like a cross between Adam Sandler. And the Barracuda Lady, and I was like, I bet that's his daughter. Oh, and like, I, I'm sure. I, I started going yeah. to IMDb, and it was like, oh yeah, that's his son, that's his daughter, yep. that's his nephew, the cross-eyed guys, his personal assistant. Like, they're yep. all <laughs> literally connected to his life in some way, shape, or if form. If you're gonna go on vacation, you got to bring your whole family. They, yeah. He just happens to be shooting a movie when he goes on vacation. Yeah, I mean, one of my frustrations is they got there's a Vanilla Ice cameo at the end. There and, is, and and. How do you in this most like in the whitest, most suburban, most <laughs> most co most corporate movie that I've ever seen? It's very white. It very is very white. There's one. There's one person of color. It's Bobby Lee who works at the hotel as like the check-in counter guy. But there's nobody. Who has two lines. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, no. And then there's a African American woman jerking off another guy in a massage table, and that's it. Like everyone else is white. Yeah, yeah. So True. in. In this white suburban corporate movie, <laughs> how do you not have Vanilla Ice sing Ice Ice Baby? That was my, I was like, <laughs> you have to have him sing Ice Ice Baby. No, nope, he wouldn't do it. He just showed up. He just showed up for a cameo, yeah. But God bless yeah. him for showing up because you got to have a sense of humor about yourself in order to do that. And I, I that was like, I, I didn't laugh at that, but I kind of chuckled because I was like, wow, good for him. And he was drinking a blue moon. And I was like, you man, that might not even be his drink, but he's doing it for the for the production, you know, for the money. Yeah, I, I enjoyed to an extent. I enjoyed the part where David Spade is about to get romantic with Lauren Lapkus and his ex, his ex-girlfriend is also at the resort with her man. And she comes by to just have a heart to heart with Lauren Lapkus and they all end up on the bed together. And seeing the 56 
eight-year-old David Spade in a love scene is very rough. But once you get past that, they have the wherewithal to, on the soundtrack, have kind of a... Cover. Kind of... Kind of a poppy folk cover of My Neck, My Back <laughs> by Kia, which and, I thought, and, and I thought so, was... And it's so romantic when it's slowed down and soft. I thought that was pretty funny. Like, with expectations adjusted as, as hard as they have been with this type of movie, that stands out to me as pretty fucking funny. Omniscient editorial note. The cover of My Neck, My Back was performed by Rob Schneider's daughter. But I also have to make a confession, and this is something that could only be done from the comfort of my own home. I was, during this movie, lazily putting together a grocery list and doing some light banking. And I have to tell you, perfect pairing for that kind of activity. <laughs> don't You don't look directly at it. Just 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 work on your grocery list. Like get your shit done, but don't go too deep. Like don't be reading articles during it because then your your mind's not gonna be on it. I gave it I gave it my full attention and that was a, <laughs> that was a little that was a little difficult. Yeah, I don't think you should give it your full attention. But before we go any further, let's just summon them Missy Bones. <laughs> Brother Bishke, you looked right at it. You looked right at the Ark of the Covenant, and what did you see? <laughs> yeah, I took time out of my day. I, I um, <laughs> even, um, kind of what I expected from the Happy Madison Productions in a better movie because Lapkiss is the is the star. Like she's the yeah. o- the only reason to see this, in my opinion. Um, you have her be bipolar and like an alcoholic, and and then David mm. Spade has to like. You know, in like a in like a more serious sense, you David Spade has to deal with that, and she'll slip into these just crazy obnoxious, and then David Spade, and then she'll settle down or something like that. But now it's like she's it's not convincing when she settles down at the end, and she's just a normal not girl. in the like, least. Yeah, it's just like ridiculous, and um, and it kills the comedy too. Like when she's normal, it's just not funny anymore. But um, I look forward to her. Um, in terms of Billy Madison productions, this is this is sloppy writing, sloppy direction, terrible acting from especially the Barracuda, but most of the actors in it. Um, <laughs> Seriously, you guys got to check out the Barracuda in this. Like, oh God, that's almost worth the price of admission to me. She yeah. is just she's on another level. Yeah, and some of the entirely. actors like Tommy Wiseau, bad. Yes. yes. Yeah, and some of the actors seem like straight out of business school. I was just like, this is so. <laughs> Well, so, again, Bishke, like some of them are literally Adam Sandler's like personal assist, like people who do other jobs in his life. Like they're, yeah, they're just yeah. they're just acting for fun as like part of the bonus. Yeah, yeah. No, they're total business class. Um Lapkus gets a it's a solid bone. Uh there you go. I did have a few random laughs for quarantine. I'll give it another half. One and a nice. half bones. Lapkus, I look forward to your future. Uh, and I successfully got through my first Happy Madison production. Well done, Brother Bishke. Well <laughs> done, and kudos to you. Brother Lucas, lay waste to this resort. Yes, I uh, was shocked to see David Spade as the lead <laughs> because I had zero awareness going into this, and I, for some reason, thought it was like a Lena Dunham movie or something. So when it started, I was like, no, no. In the cold open, honestly... Like the first 30 seconds to like two minutes, I was like, I can't do this. If this is the movie, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> and then the first laugh came right after that. The very first laugh nice. for me was so like the cold open is David Spade on a Tinder date. He's like at a bar. He meets uh, Lauren Lupkus and she's crazy. So he instead of like just walking out the front door like a normal person would have and been like, I'm out of here. You're nuts. Like I'm gone. He like, I have to go to the bathroom. And which is like a very 1990s like shtick. Uh, 20, oh, yeah. 2020, you would just like walk right out. But like in yeah, so like so he's trying to get out through the bathroom window, and she catches him. And what's funny is he like falls out of the window and like hits a dumpster and rolls off the dumpster and then lands on the ground. And he's like ow ow, and then it cuts to like a wide, and he's on the ground in an alley, and his leg or no, his his ankle, his foot is like twisted 90 degrees yes. the wrong way. 
And for whatever reason, that image of David Spade with his foot bent backwards just had me laughing out loud so hard. And that was before she <laughs> wanted to, you wanted to see him get hurt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the second laugh, just for the record, was when they're in Hawaii and Lauren Lovekiss is gone. Like she's been raging. She's crazy. It's like the morning after their like first night together. And David Spade is like, oh, good. She's still asleep. And she sleeps with one of those uh, sleep apnea like breathing mask. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And she's like on her back with the mask on snoring, like dead asleep. And it was, it was actually kind of like funnily shot where like David Spade, like tiptoes out of the room around her bed. And it's like one long take where the camera like pans over as he tips out. And then as he's gone, the camera like pans back to Laureen Lupkiss and her eyes just like bolt open. Like she's like a fucking, you know, like, terminator that's like being reactivated or something like it, yeah that, that had like a big laugh for me because it just looked ominous and like scary for that split second so three bones yeah that being said <laughs> look i feel it should have been a much younger actor opposite uh lauren lupkis and if if it is david spade it's a pretty simple fix and the simple fix is... Is this a live rewrite? I guess. Not really. This, yeah, this is... All right, yeah, this is a live rewrite, yeah. Do it live! I'll write it and we'll do it live! The simple fix would be to make David Spade uh, Lauren Lubkiss's boss. And Jeff mm. Pearson, who plays David Spade's boss, is like, you know, another character, like a bartender. Like, you just give him another role. But I think it could have worked if, like, David Spade was, like, the boss of a company trying to act professional, trying to get like, you know, his business is failing. He's trying to get like all his employees rallied together. And the wrong Missy is like making him go crazy. You know, it's like, what about Bob? Like, he's like, get away from me, get out of it. But in the end, she's the one who kind of teaches him how to like save his own company or something. Mm, right. But like the way it was set up, I was so, like, you can see it a mile away. Like, oh, well, of course he's going to like fall in love with uh lupkis by the end of it and it's so unconvincing and it's so bad it's like <laughs> oh like a part of me honestly i would have loved to have seen a movie a feature film where it's just david spade going on one tinder date after another in los angeles like it's just a series of scenes you know some good some bad some ugly but like <laughs> once it turned into forgetting sarah marshall like when they showed up to the resort i lost like all my bones i was like come on guys like again you got to do all your bones. <laughs> well, I'll give it one bone for for Lauren Lupkis because she is like the Full Steve, bone? The, the Steve Martin, you know, the jerk. I keep going back to that, but that's like the high standard. And yeah, she has charisma and she's funny. And like a lot of the early going, she's just like swinging for the fences. But you're right. Like as it goes on, it unravels. So I, I have to give it one bone. One bone. I I'm impressed, Lucas. That's a full bone. You don't want to go a half bone. You don't want to give her a half bone. You want to give her a full uh, bone. That bone is hers and hers alone and no one else's. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I agree. I think she is an amazing talent. I think there is no limit to how far she can go with the crazy amounts of character work that she does. And once she gets a good script, it's all over. Like she's what's next. And everybody else in this movie is riding off into the twilight of <laughs> these fucking comedies. Yeah. Like I, I think I think David Spade, like they'll probably do a wrong Missy Two or something, but I don't know I don't know if he can be our, our hero anymore. I don't know if he ever could be. No. I, think I mean I think I, I think if you had a like a younger actor in his role, you could still include him as like one of the office workers or one of Nick Swordstrom's friends, and you can still write him a big part where he's cracking jokes and being himself. But to put him in to make him carry the movie in that position, it's unfair. It's just like, dude, you have you have a wig on, you have a fucking bird's nest on your head. <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot to take in even when he's wearing a hat like he doesn't take his wig off so the hat's like on top of a wig so it looks like he's got like a pumpkin on his head like under his hat yeah <laughs> it's it's disturbing i'm going to give lauren lapkus a full bone or laureen lupkus as lt would call her <laughs> sorry i apologize <laughs> i also have a soft spot for nick swardson aka nick swardstrom as lucas would call him because i think he he's not only a minnesota boy he's good midwest stock but i also have a soft spot for his 
woefully misunderstood movie Bucky Larson Born to be a Star. I forget oh, what, God. The, what what the subtitle is. That was his Apex but Mountain. <laughs> that and that movie I found to be in a very stinky sort of way, hilarious. So are you gonna, dro- always... are you gonna drop that on us someday? God, I hope I do. I <laughs> hope you guys give me a reason. So I have a soft spot for him. I I, I always smile when he shows up. And I also just think, you know, this movie kept a smile on my face throughout, whether or not I was smiling at how fucking stupid it was or smiling because I actually thought something was clever. I see the value, especially during these lockdown times, of just having like the 46th Happy Madison bullshit movie (laughs) being played in the background just like a fucking snugly comfortable blanket you know yeah so sandler's shtick has never been particularly soothing to me but i can see the value it has for the millions and millions and millions of other ticket buying people and netflix subscribing people that that do love him so yeah i'm going to give this Ooh, it's a one and a half bone movie for me, but I'm giving it the quarantine bump to two. Wow. Two kind of rickety, you know, piece together bones, but two laundry, I, laundry folding bones. Yes. Yeah. A half a bone of yours probably goes to to Rob Van Winkle, Vanilla Ice, you know, like good for him. Sure. He was probably more important to my upbringing than Adam Sandler was. Same. I probably listened to To the Extreme and Extremely Live and the Ninja Turtles 2 soundtrack more times collectively than I have ever watched any Adam Sandler Dude, film. Dude, so. the, 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 the Vanilla Ice debut album, I forget the title, that was the first album I ever bought as a child in 1990 when I was in third grade. Yeah, Cool as Ice yes. is a favorite movie as well. So we got quite the bone spread here, and I'm very interested to see if any of our listeners check it out and if they have any strong opinions about anything. But I think we can all agree Lauren Lapkus is a shining beacon of hope in a increasingly desolate comedic landscape <laughs> yeah it was great yeah. to see her i mean she's all fire and brimstone Com- yeah. comedy wise comedy brimstone yeah put her and tiffany haddish in a movie and i'm there like yeah yes oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely no 48 hours bishki we should reboot 48 yes. hours but we yes. should call it 24 hours and put the two of them in it. exactly yeah because the tension spans are lower before i forget i want to give a shout out to collinsville illinois y'all Woo! Collinsville. We've been watching our stats of our podcast, you know, what what little is available. And Collinsville, Illinois, always coming through in the clutch week after week. Something's going on down there. Thank you, Collinsville. We love you. Love and light, Collinsville. If there's any way for you to, you know, one of one of you to be a representative and reach out to us and let us know. Hit, Hit us up in those comments on IG. Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. What's up, Egypt? Egypt always coming through. We're doing a live tour in Egypt next year. <laughs> yes. 2021. From the Giza pyramids, baby. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Let's do it all. And uh, yeah, boys, I miss your musk. Let's get back in that edge. Can't someday. wait to get back in the edge. I'm counting mm. down the days for uh, Christopher Nolan's Tenet. <laughs> that, Crash a real 747, one, huh? I found out today. Yeah. Wow. Well, let us pray. In Nolan, we pray. Somehow bring us back safely to the theater for bring, your opus. Bring us home now. Love and light to you boys. Love, Love and, and light. light. Stay Love safe. And light. I miss you all. Miss you guys. See you in the real world soon. Hey!